Gorillas and chimpanzees share more than 90% of their genes with humans. Anthropological research has analyzed variables of life's history in these primates, such as the duration of pregnancy, the birth weight, the growth rate, the age of sexual maturity, the age of erosion of the teeth, the duration of life, etc. Scientists have observed how these variables correlate with winning age in these animals. If we talk about humans, the question is, when will you naturally win your children if you did not have many cultural rules about it? A studies of intercultural literature on winning age show that cultures have very different beliefs about when children should be winned. For example, from very early in the United States until very late in other countries. It is often heard that the average age of winning around the world is 4.2 years, but this figure is not precise or significant. A survey of 64 traditional studies done prior to the 1940s showed a median duration of breastfeeding of about 2.8 years. But with some societies breastfeeding for much shorter and some for much longer, it is meaningless statistically to speak of an average age of winning worldwide, as too many children never nurse at all, or their mothers give up in the first few days or exit weeks when they go back to work. It is true that there are still many societies in the world where children are routinely breastfed until the age of four or five years or older, and even in the United States, some children are nursed for this long and longer. In societies where children are allowed to nurse as long as they want, they usually self-win with no argument or emotional trauma between three and four years of age. This interest also stems from the realization that other animals have natural ages for winning, around eight weeks for dogs, eight to twelve months for horses, etc. Presumably, these animals don't have cultural belief about when the winning will be appropriate. In a group of 21 species of non-human primates, monkeys and apes, studied by Holly Smith, she found that the offspring were winning at the same time they were getting their first permanent molars. In humans, that will be 5.5 to 6.0 years. It has been common for pediatricians to claim that length for gestation is approximately equal to length of nursing in many species, suggesting a winning age of nine months for humans. However, this relationship turns out to be affected by how large the adult animals are. The larger the adult, the longer the length of breastfeeding relative to gestation. For chimpanzees and gorillas, the two primates closest in size to humans and also the most closely genetically related, the relationship is 6 to 1. That is to say, they nurse their offspring for six times the length of gestation, actually 6.1 for the chimps and 6.4 for gorillas. In humans, that could be 4.5 years of nursing, six times the nine month of gestation. It has been common for pediatricians to claim that most mammals win their offspring when they have tripled their birth weight, suggesting a winning age of one year in humans. Again, though, this is affected by body weight, with larger mammals nursing their offspring until they have quadrupled their birth weight. In humans, quadrupling of birth weight occurs between 2.5 and 3.5 years usually. One study of primates shows that the offspring weighing when they had reached about one third their adult weight. This happens in humans about five to seven years. A comparison of winning age and sexual maturity in non-human primates suggests a winning age of six to seven for humans, about halfway to reproductive maturity. Studies have shown that a child's immune system doesn't completely mature until about six years of age, and it is well established that breast milk helps develop the immune system and augment it with a maternal antibodies as long as breast milk is produced. No studies has been done on breast milk composition after two years postpartum. And on and on. The minimum predicted age for natural age of winning in humans is 2.5 years, with a maximum of 7.0 years. 
In terms of the benefits of a standard breastfeeding, there have been a number of studies comparing a breastfed and bottle fed babies in terms of the frequency of various diseases and also IQ achievement. In every case, the breastfed babies has lower risks of diseases and higher IQs than the bottle fed babies. In those studies that divided breastfed babies into categories based on length of breastfeeding, the babies breastfed the longest did better in terms of both lower disease and higher IQ. In other words, if the categories were 0 to 6 months of breastfeeding, 6 to 12 months, 12 to 18 months, and 18 to 24 plus months, then the 18 to 24 plus months babies did the best and the 12 to 18 months babies did the next best, and the 6 to 12 months babies did the next best, and the 0 to 6 months babies is the worst of the breastfed groups, but still much better than the bottle feeding group. This has been shown for gastrointestinal illness, upper respiratory illness, multiple sclerosis, diabetes, heart disease, and on and on and on. Likewise, the babies nursed the longest score, the highest on the IQ test. One important point to notice is that none of these studies look at children who had nursed longer than two years. 18 to 24 months, presumably, the benefits continue. The milk continues with the same nutritional and immunological value. However, no one has yet proved either way that the benefits of breastfeeding either continue or stop at two years of age because the appropriate studies has not been done. The trend during the first two years is clearly for continued benefits the longer you nurse. Clearly, the phenomenon of this mission returns is at work here. The first six months of breastfeeding are clearly much more important in terms of the baby nutrition and immunological development than the six months from 3.5 to 4 years. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't continue to provide breast milk if your baby wants and you don't mind. Clearly, babies born in developed countries do not have to deal with all diseases, parasites, and contaminated water that babies have in countries with extreme poverty. Every day, there are more complementary food that we can choose that are safe and clean. We can immunize our children and administer antibiotics for infection when necessary. The fact that we can does not mean that breastfeeding is not important. There is no scientific study that shows that the breast milk ceases to be beneficial after a certain age of the infant. However, it has been demonstrated that prolonged breastfeeding brings benefits to the infant's health in the short and medium term. Babies who are breastfed still have the advantage over bottle-fed babies, even in an absolutely clean environment with wonderful medical care. They get sick less often. They are smarter. They are happier. Another important consideration for the older child is that they can maintain their emotional bond with a person rather than being forced to switch to an animated object such as a teddy bear or a blanket. I think this set the stage for a life of people orientation rather than materialism. And I think that is a good thing. I also can't imagine living through the total years without those close loving connection to a child going through enormous changes, some of which are very frustrating to the child. I could go on forever, but we'll stop here. Catherine Detweiler. I hope this has been of help. Thank you very much, everybody.